Hi, you guys. I have a question for you, or at least I will ask or state the question that was asked to me a couple of times. And that question is, what do you do when what you pray for comes in the aesthetic, the style, the look that you are not expecting? What do you do? And I answered that question both times. From my flesh, using God's words, God's grace is sufficient. If it's what you pray for, God will give you the grace to handle it. That's really, there's more to it than that. It's more nuanced than that. And immediately, um, as I was studying John 14 this morning, the Holy Spirit really weighed something down on me. And he stated, if you feel in your spirit that what you see is what you've prayed for, that I've handed you something you've prayed for, even though it doesn't look like what you thought it should be or should look like, you didn't see it as aesthetically pleasing or it's not what you expected because that's not what you normally desire. Um, in my regard is it's not what I expected because it's not what I expected my career to look like. Um, then baby, you coming out your flesh, you're coming out your pride. That is opposite of God's Holy Spirit. God's Spirit is Spirit. God in um, John 14, he states that, Jesus states that he's going to send an advocate and it's God's Spirit, the Spirit of truth. So I was like, whew, believe that's John um, 14, 17, actually. Yes, it's still on my spirit. And this was like six o'clock this morning. Um, but I'm going to read exactly what the Holy Spirit gave me right after I was meditating on his word. And it states, um, God doesn't answer prayers based on fleshly desires. That's the devil. God is spirit. He is the spirit of truth. Again, that's John 14, 17. The fact that you recognize an answer prayer, not considering what it looks like, means you've recognized it in the spirit. Rejection based on what it looks like, it's aesthetic, it's not faith, it's not God. It's of the flesh, the way the world behaves. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen, it's in Hebrew. The fact that you recognize an answer prayer in the spirit, not based on what it looked like, but because your spirit recognized it, but rejected it, it's the opposite of faith because you're using your eyes. The fact that you recognize and answer prayer in the spirit but rejected it because it doesn't look like you expected it is rejecting God's gift for you and more than likely removing you from the perfect will of God. Oosh. Now, there is a permissive will which we'll call God's will of do what you want. Free will. God doesn't want to bend you to and make you do things. That's not love. Anyone who coerces you, manipulates you, lies to you to try to get you to do something, baby, that is not of God. That is abuse, period. And abuse can be finagled to look like positive reinforcement. But if anyone is trying to manipulate you into something, that's the spirit of Jezebel. And also you denying what God has given you because it don't look like what you thought it should look like. That's pride, the spirit of Leviathan. So, baby, okay, we're going to digress because, you know, spiritual warfare. But yes, God's perfect will. God has a perfect will. He has a permissive will. So when you are doing whatever you want to and you're being disobedient to God, that's permissive. Now, God has a perfect will, which he ain't going to... He ain't gonna allow you to mess up his perfect will. Hello, Jonah. He ain't gonna allow you to mess up his perfect perfect will. Hello, what happened to uh, Joseph? A lot of things happen, but in the end, God had intended for Joseph to be in Egypt. Now, how he got there, but there's a perfect will and there's a permissive will. And God's perfect will comes with unmerited favor, grace, provision, and protection. It comes with the promises of God, especially Romans 8, 28, where all things work together for the good of those who are called to God according to what his purpose. 
God's purpose, not yours. God's perfect will, not your permissive and you being disobedient. Mm. And James 1, 4 and 8, which it says, let patience make a perfect work in you. So there are some things that God will allow and permit to perfect some other things out of you so that you are not begging or pleading for anything, baby. But if you want those things to happen, you need to walk in the perfect will, the will of God for you. God's perfect will comes with the fruit of the spirit. So that's how you know. Now, if you're going through storms, if life is turbulent and things like that, but you are walking with God, hello, um, Shamarach, Meshach, Abednego, in a, in a fire, in a fiery furnace, they had peace there. The, Jesus was with them in that when Jesus walked into the storm, when the disciples was um, fretting and stuff, and he's like, peace be still, baby. You have peace when God walks with you, even if you're in a storm. That's fruit of the spirit. You have joy. You have kindness, love, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, faithfulness, sorry, gentleness. All of this yields self-control and patience or temperance. When you are walking with God, things are not always easy. Lord have mercy ever. <laughs> Um, but if you have peace in that walk and doing that hard thing, then you know that you're walking with God. You're in his perfect will. You're covered by him. And it will also give you the power of long suffering. That's why I call it James 1, 4 through 8. Patience will then give you the self-control that you need. And you can still yield those good things, the gentleness and the love and the goodness and the kindness and joy. If you're experiencing bitterness, if you're um, vexed, and full of anxiety and hate and annoyance, um, you need to check where you are. Maybe you've gotten out of alignment with God. And then also, if you don't see these things, repent. Again, that is pride, which God absolutely hates. When you tell God, hey, I've been praying for this and God sends it to you and you're like, mm, I've been praying for another job, Jesus, but I didn't want that one. I've been praying for a woman, Jesus, but uh, not that one. I've been praying for a man, Jesus, but not that old. Um, uh, God's like, hold up, hold up, hold up. You recognize that this is a gift in your spirit, but because it doesn't look like what you think society would accept or what you accept, that's your pride, and you're gonna over, you're gonna um, object to what I'm sending you. Okay, baby, you do you. Let me know when you come up to come back and be and do me, because Jesus said. You are to pick up your cross and follow me. Not you get to select whatever cross that you want to, or you can just follow me whenever you want to put it down. No, baby, you got to submit to the will of the cross, the, the will of God. And so I would advise you to ask the Lord for forgiveness, for leaning into your own understanding, for not obeying his Holy Spirit, for grieving his Holy Spirit when he's giving you an unction and saying, this is what I have for you. This is what I want for you. And you're like, I don't want to do that because I don't want to move over there to that city. It's too much. I don't want to move there to that little town. It's too quiet. I don't want to mess with that man because he too old for me. I don't want to mess with that woman because she too thick for me. I don't want to mess with that uh, <laughs> job or, or, or that ministry because it's too small for me. That small roots, baby. Nah, you are leaning to your own understanding. and You are being your own God instead of submitting to God. So repent. Do it in sincerity, and then God will give you the option via the Holy Spirit and say, hey, this is how you get back in alignment with me. So that is the message. What do you do when God sends you something, but it don't look like, ugh, it ain't aesthetically pleasing, um, it's not what I expected. Take it up with God, honey bun. Fast and pray on it. Make sure what you want is not your pride. Because if you've noticed like, oh my God, I think God sent this to me. Oh my God, I think this is what I prayed for. That is in the spirit. Prayer is spiritual. But it ain't the amount of money that I thought I should be making. It ain't the title that I thought I should be getting. It ain't the size that I want. It's not the height that I want. It's not the age that I want. It's not the city that I want. Baby, you are not God. Submit to his will. Repent so that you get in that perfect will and get the fruit of the spirit in your life. Amen. Bye y'all.